Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's good to see each one of you this morning. Very thankful to be in the Lord's house today. And uh, happy Father's Day to all the fathers that are here today. To those spiritual fathers that are out here today, too. We truly need men. We're going to talk about maybe something a little bit from a little bit different angle today. Uh, we're going to talk about some things uh, in regard to maybe some videos, maybe some movies, uh, types of things. But we're going to talk about a need for a few good men. Amen? Amen. We need that today. I'd like you to take your Bible. Turn to the book of Ezekiel. Everybody know where Ezekiel's at? All right. <laughs> Chapter 22. Ezekiel 22. I'm going to begin reading with verse 23. We have some video footage that we would like to share here this morning. Just some things to add to it. But I'd like to talk about a need that we have as a people, as a nation, as families, for a few good men. You know, a few years ago there was a, an ad that was put out by the Marines that basically made this proclamation. They are looking for a few good men. The Marines are known as the proud, the brave, and they are the Marines. <coughs> Ezekiel 22, reading from verse 23 to the end of the chapter. And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, say to her, You are a land that is not cleansed or rained on in the day of indignation. The conspiracy of her prophets in her midst is like a roaring lion tearing the prey that they devour, devoured people and have taken treasure and precious things. They have made many widows in her midst. Her priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things. They have not distinguished between the holy and the unholy, nor have they made known the difference between the unclean and the clean. They have hidden their eyes from my Sabbath, so that I am profaned among them. Her princes in her midst are like wolves, tearing the prey, to shed blood, to destroy people, and to get dishonest gain. Her prophets plaster them with tempered mortar, seeing false visions and divining lies, divining lies for them, saying, Thus says the Lord God, when the Lord has not spoken, the people of the land used to used oppressions, committed robbery, mistreated the poor and the needy, and they wrongfully oppressed the stranger. This is the verse I want to focus on. So I sought for a man among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it, but I found no one. May the Lord have a blessing to read his word here this morning. Tim, I'm going to let you begin. You know, there's something I praise God about for this fellowship. Because I've seen over the years that many fellowships, the majority of the people that were there was made up of women. Amen. But I'm thankful that we have a church that is... I, is seeing a great number of men. My prayer is that we be godly men, that we be the example, that we be that watchman on the wall, that we be that one to fill the gap, that we be there for our wives, that we be there for our children, that we be men of God. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of our fellowship. Thank you for hearing from God today. Let's give these men a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. You may be seated. You know, this past week, I'm not sure where 
this message is going to go today, so you'll just have to bear with me. This past week, obviously, we're, Cindy and I attended a, a remembrance gathering for Diane and Shit, the Fisher store in Newville. Many of the people that obviously came and purchased parts over the years knew Diane very, very well. Uh, but Diane's passing is, is definitely one that's, that's hit a lot of people in the community. George and I both knew Diane for a long time also. Um, many of you in here have met Diane. She was here attending our services for, for some time. But her friend, Sam, uh, took things pretty hard. Sam was sharing the other day about losing her mother when she was 11 years old and becoming very bitter, very angry. But it was only through her father, a Christian man, that was able to keep her from maybe doing something crazy or doing, going the wrong direction. Only to have, well, maybe I'll back up. She said when she first met Diane as a friend, Diane became almost like her second mother. And Sam says to lose now another person so close to me, I'm feeling those same types of angers again. But she says, my father, my earthly father, comes in alongside and says, you need to trust the Lord in this. You need to take what you've been given and make the best use of it to continue on in life. We don't always know what God's going to bring our way. But also this past week, gathering in a funeral service for Fred Lehman. Now many of you probably in here know Fred. Probably most, if not all of us, know Bev. I don't know how well maybe you know their children. But over two weeks ago, sitting in the hospital room with Fred, I was being able to be part of his reestablishing himself in a relationship with Jesus Christ. That was most important, to be able to have that accomplished. And Fred did that. So I can honestly say, as we stood by the graveside, there in Newville, Yes, we are laying an earthly body to rest, but the spiritual life is alive and well. I couldn't help but use some things in regard to military background. Obviously, Fred served in the Air Force, so he had some military upbringing. But you know, we need men who are willing to serve for our country, and most importantly, for our home. And Fred did that. But I'm thankful that we have men like that. But I don't know if you've ever shook hands with Fred. I know Bob Boy says, Fred had some big hands. We need men today that are willing to embrace the handshake, something that just took me back when Kristen shared there at the graveside about how much she was going to miss her father. And she said, one of the things I'm going to miss the most is his big bear hugs. It's not easy losing someone. But we need a few good men. We know we need more than even a few to be able to stand in the gap, to fill the void. You know, I read from Ezekiel. If you look at those preceding verses, ahead of verse 30, it almost paints a picture of our country today, of where we are, of how we as a nation of people are failing our God, how we've turned our back on Him, how we're seeing churches today that are, that are writing God out of the message, out of the service. He's nowhere near. Being a functioning man in today's world is taking responsibility. Thinking like a man, acting like a man, working like a man, and being a loving husband and a loving father to those that we've been entrusted with. Do you realize Men, 
you will not be a good father until you are a good man. You're not going to be a good father until you become a good man. You know, there was a movie, it was back probably 1992, movie's title, A Few Good Men. Has anyone ever seen it? Within that movie, there was a young military lawyer was taking on a very strong colonel. That colonel was played by Jack Nicholas. Colonel Jessup. At the end of that movie, when Tom Cruise, who played Daniel Caffey, Lieutenant Daniel Caffey, pressed for an answer to a particular incident that took place in the, that caused the loss of life. One of the things that Jack Nicholas came up with when he came back at Tom Cruise was you want me on that wall. You need me on that wall. You know, those words might be lost in, well, that man didn't have the right to do what he did. But the fact remains, we need men on the wall today. Amen. We need men who are willing to face whatever's out there. You know, we can go back in the Word of God and we can see, we are a nation of walls, right? We have borders. We have areas of protection. You look at Old Testament Israel. Walls were their form of protection. But those walls are one thing. They needed some way of seeing over those walls. So they had built on the walls, they had towers. We need those today that are positioned in those towers, spiritual towers. You know, sometimes we might say that, well, there's people who don't understand us. You know, I. You know, to be a man's man, to be who I am, well, I'm misunderstood. And maybe some of us think, well, we're misunderstood by our wives, but you know, just a couple things off the cuff here. Um, maybe to lighten it up a little bit. When a man says, it would take too long to explain, what he's saying to his wife is he has no idea how it works in the first place. <laughs> When a man says to his wife, that's interesting, dear. He could be thinking, are you still talking? When a man says to his wife, can I help with dinner? Truth is, he's wondering why it's not ready yet. When a man says, I heard you, he means, I haven't the foggiest idea what she just said. <laughs> and hoping desperately that he can fake it, <laughs> that he doesn't have to spend the next three days with her yelling at him. <laughs> Most of us guys have probably been there with this one. When a man says, I'm not lost. <laughs> I'm not done yet. You didn't have to laugh that quick. <laughs> I'm not lost. I know exactly where we are. What he means is, um, nobody may ever see us again. <laughs> <laughs> Enough. All right. I have no little stronger. What we need to be today is men that our wives can lean upon, men that our children can learn from. Proverbs 3, 5 says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not on thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. You know, the first <clears throat> prayer that God wants to hear from any man 
is the prayer of salvation. Up until that point, you may as well say God's not listening. What he wants to hear is that heart that surrenders unto him. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace you are saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is a gift. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man would boast. Guys, men, do you like being in control? Don't be afraid to answer. She's sitting there. She'll be all right. It's, it's nature of the man to be in control. How many of us in here, as men, like to make things happen? Absolutely. <laughs> There's those that make things happen, and there are those that wonder what happened. <laughs> you know, Jesus solves what could be considered a dilemma. Matthew 18, 3 says, And he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye be converted and become as little children. Think of it, guys. we got to go back to our childhood. We cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> children have an attitude we call the attitude of trust. We as men, even though we may think ourselves mature and above all those childish things, we need to have a childlike trust in the things of the Lord if we're going to accomplish the work that God has given us to do. We need a few good men. We need men who are willing to rise to the occasion here today. God has set before us a responsibility. But he's given us the strength to accomplish it. One of my favorite verses of Scripture comes out of Isaiah 40. I'm going to read two verses, 30 and 31. Isaiah 40. And the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young man shall utterly fall. This is my verse. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not You know, there's so many verses that we could go to. Another one we could go to is Psalm 147.10. The Lord delights not in the strength of the horse. He taketh not pleasure in the legs of a man. God desires to be the strength within. We need it in here today. He is that supply. God shall supply all of our needs, right? God shall meet us right where we are. Yes, many of us men have worked hard over the years. It's one of the things that Fred Lehman had mentioned when we were in the hospital about working hard, providing for his family, sometimes not being at certain family functions or sporting events as they took place, missing those things. But when I heard that family, all three girls and Brian, got up and talked about their father and how much they loved him. What we need today is soundness of mind. We need those who have proper reasoning. <clears throat> We need those who are using wisdom that only God gives. Proverbs teaches us the beginning of knowledge comes through fear, right? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, I'm sorry. But just a few chapters later, he says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. But James chapter 1, verse 5 says, if, if you lack wisdom, ask. Guys, do we know everything? 
Is there anybody in here that does? Is there anybody in here willing to admit to it? <laughs> if we don't understand, we need to call upon God. He is all wisdom. We have to, as men, we have to learn to lean. On who? Who are we to lean on as men? Our wives? We're to lean on our wives, aren't we? Cindy's shorter than I am. It gets a little hard in the back every now and then. But <laughs> no. She'll get me when we get home. <laughs> we need to learn to lean on the Lord. Galatians 5, 16 and 17 says, Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other, so they cannot do the things that they should do. What we need to know, we can also find in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. You know, to be the men that we need to be, we need to know who God is. Amen. Do you know Jesus today? Do you know him in a personal way? Our families need that. Our communities need that. Our world needs that. Look at what's going on in our country alone. It's sad. We need to stand in the gap. We need to be on the wall. We need to be praying on behalf of our nation or we're going to lose it. I'm sorry. I get a righteous anger when I see some of the things that are going on today. And every man in here should likewise feel the same way. Every mother, every woman in here should feel the same way. Church, we need to rise up. And over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be talking a little more in a powerful way in what the Spirit has made available for us and how we can face the opposition that's coming at us and how we need to tap into that. You know, being head of the household doesn't give you a a plaque on the front of your desk saying, I'm the boss. Though you need to be the head of the house, it needs to be done in loving leadership. The Bible says God is no respecter of persons. Do you realize, guys, men, husbands, that God views your wife the same as he views you. Amen. Amen. You know, we, when we join together in marriage, the two become one. Just like Jesus talks about him and his heavenly father being one. In the husband and wife joining together, the two become one. The Bible says she's the weaker vessel, but you know that's not an insult. That's not an insult at all. It's rather a compliment. She's not of lesser value. She's just more fragile. This is not something that we as men should take for granted. The hardest thing we may have to do today is not going to be to fight a battle on a battlefield somewhere. Though I am very thankful for those who have. You know, here we are, probably very close, the midway point between Memorial Day and July 4th. And we're talking about the importance of a few good men. 
We have a responsibility to our wives, to our children, to our communities, to the workplace, to be the men that God has called us to be. But the hardest thing that we may have to do is to be a good husband. To be a good husband. To be a good father. You know, in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 13, there's a story. It's not all in that one verse, by the way. You'd have to read a little more text there. But a man by the name of Eli, he was a priest within the temple. He ran the temple. But the Bible makes it very clear that Eli could not even take care of his own sons. David, King David. David ran a kingdom. David was a well-trained and versed commander of the battlefields. <coughs> but do you realize in 1 Kings chapter 1, it talks about his failure to his family, to his children. We need men. Men who are willing to stand up. You know, the word men can actually be somewhat translated Adam. When we look back in Genesis and we see the shortcomings of the first man, Adam, we see the sin that was committed. Romans 5.12 says, Wherefore, as one man sin entered into the world, through it death by sin. And so death passed on upon all men. We are inheritors of the original sin. But we don't have to live in that sin. Romans 5, 18 and 19, Therefore, as by the one offense, one judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one free gift, came upon all men and the justification of life. Praise be to God. Praise be to the Lord Jesus Christ today for giving his life for us. Where would we be today without him? Where would you be today? Think of it. Where would you be today without Jesus in your life? I'm not sure I would even know. I'm not sure I would even be here. I don't know. But I'm thankful for the Lord. We do not know. The last half of verse 19 in Romans 5 says, For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Something has to happen to make that work. Something has to happen. What has to happen? If we as sinful men are to become righteous, what has to happen? We need to accept Jesus into our life. We need to confess our sins that we may become one with Him. As men, we have to learn to love. We're, guys, we're all loving men, right? Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 13, 1 to 3, Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, I have not, and have not charity, I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor and Though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profit me nothing. The most important thing that we as men, as husbands, as fathers today need to ex express and live in is the love of Jesus Christ and we in turn share that with those around us. 
1 Corinthians 16, 22 says, If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be accursed. We need men on the wall today. We need husbands in the homes. Fathers in the homes. We need men and Christ-like examples in the workplace today. We need men in the church. And again, I'm thankful for this church. But they're not all like what we have here. We need men, strong leaders, in positions of responsibility today. We need them. Our families need us. The real expression of leadership comes when we love those around us. We could go to scriptures, scripture after scripture. God admonishes every husband to what? Love his wife. You know, we're not talking about just emotional feelings. We're not talking about just a, a, a satisfaction that comes. It means that you and I are one. And what I do is to express my love to you. To care for your well-being. Every effort, everything I do as a husband should be to express my love to wife, family, and community. It goes far beyond telling someone you love them. It's easy to say. It's a lot more difficult to show. Right? We also need to have the fellowship of the church. Ephesians 5.25, Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. The same passage is basically telling us our words need to be like ones. We need to express love in the same way that he did. Revelation 3, 9 says, Behold, I will make them of a synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved them. These things were written to a church. To love the church. We should love the church. We should love the things of God. We need men today. What we need to do is get connected with Jesus Christ. Deeply connected. That we might be deeply connected to our wives, to our children, to our communities, to our church. John 15, 5 says, get connected. Now, I'm not talking about your cell phone. It doesn't say get connected, by the way, but it does, in a way. Listen, Jesus says, I am the vine. You are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Connected. For without me, you can do nothing. We need to be taking in the Word of God. We need to be trusting the Holy Spirit of God. We need to be walking in a genuine, loving expression of that Christ-like love and faith that we need to have. Acts 2.41 then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day they were added onto the groups 3,000 souls. You know, when we live who Jesus Christ is, beginning in our manhood, beginning with our homes, our families, our wives, our children, and all that we can touch within our communities, God's going to bless it. Acts 2, 47, same chapter, verse 47. Praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily. So it went beyond even the 3,000. He added daily to what was taking place. We need a few good men. 
We need those who are willing to stand in the gap. I'm going to turn back to a portion of Scripture. In Isaiah 62. I'm probably going to close with this one. Sixty-two, verse six, Isaiah sixty-two. I have set watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem, who shall never hold their peace by day or night. You who make mention of the Lord, do not keep silent. Give and give to him no rest till he establishes until he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. You know, as I read those beginning verses in Ezekiel, I couldn't help but catch glimpses of our country today. And I said I wasn't going to read any more verses, didn't I? But I'm going to read one more. Because I'm going to read that last verse from the text that we were reading from here today. Ezekiel 31. Because if, if we as Christians, as we as men, if we as soldiers of Jesus Christ do not accomplish what we've been called to, this is our fate. <coughs> Ezekiel 22, verse 31. Therefore I have poured out my indignation on them, I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath, and I have recompensed their deeds on their own heads, says the Lord. Guys, do we know Jesus Christ in a personal way today? Amen. Does every one of us in here know Jesus today? Well, before I pray here this morning, I'm going to let Tim bring up another video. <coughs> Same song. But I want you to understand the timing of this particular event that took place in Carnegie Hall, New York, was a short time after 9-11. And there was a lot of deep emotion was expressed through the song that we opened with here from the Gaithers this morning. And I think all of us need to be stirred from time to time in what takes place because we do need men today to stand in the wall, to fill the gap, to look out for all that is going on, to protect those we love and care for. We need a few good men. The flower arrangement that you see up front here is in memory of Fred Lehman. Bev and the, the girls, Brian, they're on some vacation time here, so uh, they weren't sure they were gonna be able to do it. Bev actually, her and Fred early on were not going to be going along, but obviously the kids encouraged Bev to, to do it. So uh, we just need to keep them in prayer. May God's peace rest upon them in this very difficult time. But I want to say there's, and I for one have been blessed, you've heard me say this before, I've been blessed in that I've had several role model figures in my life over the years. Good examples to help me grow to where I am today. And I'm thankful for those few good men that took time to spend time with me. And I probably could go around the room here and we could all talk about someone who's very important to us, someone who helped keep us, may we say, on the straight and narrow to bless our lives. But you know, God has called us now to take responsibility for what he's given us, to be that watchman on the wall, to be that one to fill the gap, to be that role model to someone else, it doesn't always necessarily mean your children only. There could be people in the workplace, 
that need to hear from, from Clint. There could be people in your job that need to hear from you. Guys coming off the road on a truck, been out there for who knows how long, needs to hear the words that you have to share, Clint. We are positioned where we need to be today as watchmen on the wall. Stay strong, stay faithful. Allow God to bless others through your life. But most of all, keep your life before the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you for being the men among our church here today. But the battle is outside. The war's out there. And we're gonna talk a little more about that in weeks to come. We need to be equipped for the battle. Are we ready? Yes, sir. Are we men? Amen. Amen. They need us on that wall. They need us. Let's pray. Father, I thank you on this blessed day that we can commemorate, celebrate, and honor our fathers. I thank you for my earthly father. I thank you, Father, for the spiritual fathers. For those that you brought in alongside to encourage, to help me in this walk of life. But Lord, now that responsibility has been passed to all of us. Lord, I pray as we go forth in this week ahead that we can truly carry the torch that has been passed to us. May we know the weightiness of the matter, the importance of the lives that are out there, the hope upon hope for those wandering lost souls. But Lord, give us the words. Let us love, let us share, and let us be faithful to answer the call. Bless the fathers. And may you, Lord, be father of all. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless. Have a wonderful day.